Hey guys, welcome back. Okay, so I'm going to be talking to you a little more about whole house search suppression. I'm going to keep this very simple and to the point, um, but I'm going to hit some really big, strong data points, so just follow along with me. Why do you need whole house search suppression? Well, if you're living in Florida, the answer is you're living in Florida. Stop overthinking it. Um, in my personal opinion, after spending a lot of time considering what's important to in dealing with our... Um, with our weather and hurricane preparation and all the conversations, I've really come to realization, especially after, you know, post COVID-19 and I hate using that as like a marker point, but let's be honest, a lot has changed since the pandemic. Just because you have the money to replace something doesn't mean that you can get your hands on the materials or the parts. So, you know, there's always been a couple mindsets out there. Hey, uh, if something happens, I'll deal with it as it comes, which is fine. The other component of it has been, hey, I need to defend what I have so that if it occurs, it occurs less likely of a situation, right? So there's always two, that, that two sides. And, and neither side is really wrong, except for now you have to think, well, just because you have the ability doesn't mean you're going to get what you need. A prime example of that would be is um, back in uh, November, actually you know, September of last year, I lost a little uh, electronic part to my refrigerator. In fact, a number of people did in my neighborhood uh, due to a surge, and I believe it was surge related. In short, I had to go and buy the part replacement. It was not available until March of this year because of the pandemic. So it's ridiculous, but it took that long to get that part uh, without overpaying some scalping price on eBay for a used version of it. But uh, but directly from GE, yeah, and it was really expensive. Normally, the thirty dollar part went for like a hundred dollars from GE. Anyways, in short, uh, I think it's important now more than ever to protect what you have. Now, another reason why you're because uh, again, we always want to start with mindset. Why do you do something? Not oh my gosh, someone on YouTube told me to do something, and so I should go and do it. No, why did you do it? What is the thought process of you spending your hard earned dollars? to do X, Y, Z. It doesn't matter what it is, right? That's the, name of this that's the name of the game of this channel is mindset. So my mindset behind this was I want to protect my home and protect everything that doesn't have a surge breaker or a strip on it. And even if I did have a strip, the reality is it's not going to handle everything like a major, major surge, right? So couple of schools. The other thing is that you need to realize that your things like my refrigerator and my washer and dryer, they all have computers in them. They're all plugged in these big, you know, outlets. Uh, there's no, there's no protection on them. I, I don't know if there, I don't know if there's out there a surge suppressor that you can put in between your 220 volt uh, electric dryer or your, or your electric oven or however you have it set up. And, and the wall, I don't, I don't believe that exists. And if, if someone proved me wrong, put me in the likes on the comments and whatever, and tell me that I'm wrong, please do, because I would like to know if that option is available. Uh, but in short, I wanted something that's to protect the whole house. The problem is being in Florida, the level of electrical, the level of rating you need for your uh, whole house surge suppression needs to be somewhere north of 100,000 uh, 100, amps or 100 kiloamps. And um, in this case, I went with the FS140, which is 140,000. Now, majority of these, uh, when they get north of typically around 80 or 75, you start to lose something. You're like, well, wait a second, isn't bigger better? It is, but what happens about micro surges? Small surges that hurt, happen every single day when you have, let's say, a smaller device kick off, like a toaster, okay? And that sends current back into the, the home. Where does that current go? Well, it gets distributed through everything that's connected into the walls. And that voltage up and down, okay, and that over voltage can over time, especially with more sensitive devices, put wear and tear on those motherboards and so forth. And don't think for a moment that you don't have a computer board in your refrigerator because you do. And you probably have one in uh, your, um, your washer and dryer or anything modern these days, including your, your ovens. So 
again, going back to what do you deal with when it comes to smaller surges and so forth? Well, the nice thing about the first surge series from Siemens is it has three levels of surge protection, low level, mid level, and high level, okay? Now, the other reason I got the first surge unit is because it's an outdoor NEMA 4X capable. If you notice, it's a little bit wet because it is a little gloomy. We had a major electrical storm last night and I was woken up at two, three o'clock in the morning from major clashes of thunder and I'm sure there was lightning involved in that. Um, and so in this particular instance, though, I realized, and not to sound kind of corny, but I felt pretty good that the whole house was protected because I put this bad boy on on Friday. OK, because I knew these storms were coming and I knew this is the beginning of the storm season. I actually had this for a month and I slacked on putting it together. And it was one of those crap. The storms are coming. We should probably do something about it. But I put it on there and it. I mean, I came back out to double check on it. So the other reason why I came outside today was because I want to make sure these lights were operating. So these green lights right now and the fact that they're not a red light and, and the alarm's not going off tells me that this is working in my home. A lot of the units you put inside the box and most people don't mount them on the outside. And the reason why is because it's more hassle. The problem is if you don't see the lights out of might, out of mind, out of sight. Who, how many of you have even opened up your main panel, let alone your sub panel recently? And that's the problem. Well, in my case, that's my backyard. You know, this is my front yard. I mean, I'm coming through here at least three times a week, minimum. And so I can glance by and these lights, whether it's bright daylight or nighttime, I can see this. And if I'm not looking, I can hear it because it's going to go off if it's bad. Once it's bad, you remove the unit, it's done its job. Obviously, if this bad boy takes a hit and it destroys it, it's done its job. It's paid itself in dividends, right? So, in short, um, I went with the Siemens FS140 because it do does slow level, mid level, and high level surges. Um, there's a whole bunch of other reasons. It's got a 10 year warranty against manufacturer defect. And I believe it's $25,000 or more on anything behind it that gets affected from electrical surge. So I didn't buy it for the warranty perspective. That's the reason why, uh, but I went with it because of all of its specifications. It was a very simple install. Um, this is with some Liquitite that I put on here. Uh, it came with the number 10 wire. It went straight inside. I pulled it open. I've got a uh, 20 amp breaker, okay? And that's all it was right there. There's a 20 amp breaker, goes in there according to the specifications. Shut the thing, call it a day. If you've never done electrical work in your house, get an electrician or someone knows what they're doing. You know, should you get an electrician? This is me telling you should get an electrician. Could you use someone that knows what they're doing? Yes, but I'm gonna tell you right now, I've seen in my own neighborhood some real hack jobs doing electrical work where they've actually bought this unit based on my suggestion and they threw it inside the box, which negates the lights and this. Now, here's another thing. If this thing takes a massive electrical hit, and it melts or explodes or whatever it does because it theoretically could or, or overheat. You're going to put that inside of your box. That is a poor choice of location because now you're going to do damage to your main, your main panel. Plus, this gets a little bit warm, I'm assuming, because it's an electronic device. So this was, in my opinion, designed more for external than internal. And you lose the optics, you know, the optics on the lights and you lose the the, the alarm. But the person who did it um, honestly doesn't think through things very much. And I, I mean, I'll leave it at that. It's a little bit I have a, I have a little bit of an edge with this individual who's been doing a lot of shady stuff in my neighborhood. So um, in short, um, this is one of a number of options. The other option you see out there is uh, your your electric company. In my case, I have Tampa Electric. They'll come out there and do ZapCap, okay? Now, what do I think about ZapCap? I think ZapCap is a, a decent option. I think it's overpriced, and I think it over, I think it alludes to overpromising. That's just my personal opinion. That doesn't mean it does. Don't, 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 don't string me up for it. Here's the reason why. It's a $60 install, roughly $50, $60 install, and it's about $20 a month. $20 a month times 12 is $240 you know, every single year. Now they say, wait, wait, there's a warranty behind it. If something occurs, we're going to cover it. You know, we're going to, we're going to, you know, we're do all this. L listen, you got to read the contract. I would strongly advise you to read the contract. And someone who works in insurance like myself 
read through that insurance contract and realized that there was a lot missing from the language. Number one, it doesn't cover against lightning. A direct lightning strike will not be covered if it covers here. Now, the reason why is because, truthfully, nothing is going to probably protect you against a full-on direct lightning strike. I mean, your house gets hit by lightning. It's near impossible to protect that entire house. I won't go into the reasons why. It's just it's just not uh, it's not a reasonable thought. Because, in short, if it hits the top of the house and radiates electricity all throughout the wiring in the home, okay... It's not unlike here where it's going to come through here. That's a little different. Now, if someone hit a lightning strike out there and it came through, I don't know, through the ground somehow and got on my panel, yes, I believe this would protect it based on its ratings. Um, but again, you never really know the circumstances. Anyways, enough of that. So um, also they kind of allude to that they only cover things that that are, are problems on their end. So for example, if there is a... A uh, capacitor that goes down, etc. Again, I'm not saying it's a good warranty or a bad warranty. That's for you to judge. There's plenty of Google, uh, plenty of things on Google reviews on it. My point is, is that it only covers what coming in from the outside, okay? Which is fine, but the main problem is, is that what about the electronics on the inside and the surges on the inside? That's what this first Surge FS140 does. All right, guys. Well, it has started raining here down here in the in the Tampa Bay area again. Uh, we got a pretty soggy couple of days. So this is the wrap-up of the video. If you have any questions, don't hesitate. Um, again, Siemens FS140. This was going for $189. $190 on Costco. I believe it's $178 right now on Amazon. It's pretty inexpensive. I had about $15, $20 worth of materials here. No, less than that. And then a $20 surge breaker and then get it installed. Took me a whole 30 minutes total. There's a couple of videos on YouTube on how to install it. So I'd suggest you read it over. Again, thank you for joining and you have a great day.